The All India Muslim League, popularized as Muslim League was a political party established during the early years of the 20th century in the British Indian Empire. Its strong advocacy for the establishment of a separate Muslim-majority nation-state, Pakistan, successfully led to the partition of British India in 1947 by the British Empire. The party arose out of a literary movement begun at the Aligarh Muslim University in which Syed Ahmad Khan was a central figure. It remained an elitist organization until 1937 when the leadership began mobilizing the Muslim masses and the League then became a popular organization. In the 1930s, the idea of a separate nation state and influential philosopher Sir Muhammad Iqbal's vision of uniting the four provinces in northwest British India further supported the rationale of the two nation theory. With global events leading up to World War II and the Congress Party's effective protest against the United Kingdom unilaterally involving India in the war without consulting the Indian people, the Muslim League went on to support the British war efforts. The Muslim League played a decisive role in the 1940s, becoming a driving force behind the division of India along religious lines and the creation of Pakistan as a Muslim state in 1947. After the partition and subsequent establishment of Pakistan, the Muslim League continued as a minor party in India where it was often part of the government. In Bangladesh, the Muslim League was revived in 1976 but it was reduced in size, rendering it insignificant in the political arena. In India, the Indian Union Muslim League and in Pakistan the Pakistan Muslim League became the original successors of the All India Muslim League. <laughs> Foundation In 1886, Sir Syed founded the Mohammedan Educational Conference, but a self-imposed ban prevented it from discussing politics. Its original goal was to advocate for British education, especially science and literature, among India's Muslims. The conference, in addition to generating funds for Sir Syed's Aligarh Muslim University, motivated the Muslim upper class to propose an expansion of educational uplift elsewhere, known as the Aligarh Movement. In turn, this new awareness of Muslim needs helped stimulate a political consciousness among Muslim elites, who went on to form the All India Muslim League. The formation of a Muslim political party on the national level was seen as essential by 1901. The first stage of its formation was the meeting held at Lucknow in September 1906, with the participation of representatives from all over India. The decision for reconsideration to form the All Indian Muslim Political Party was taken and further proceedings were adjourned until the next meeting of the All India Mohammedan Educational Conference. The Simla deputation reconsidered the issue in October 1906 and decided to frame the objectives of the party on the occasion of the annual meeting of the Educational Conference, which was scheduled to be held in Dhaka. Meanwhile, Nawab Salimullah Khan published a detailed scheme through which he suggested the party to be named All India Muslim Confederacy. Pursuant upon the decisions taken earlier at the Lucknow meeting and later in Simla, the annual meeting of the All India Mohammedan Educational Conference was held in Dhaka from 27 December until 30 December 1906. 3,000 delegates attended, headed by both Nawab Waqar ul Mulk and Nawab Muhazan ul Mulk, the secretary of the Mohammedan Educational Conference, in which they explained its objectives and stressed the unity of Muslims under the banner of an association. It was formally proposed by Nawab Salimullah Khan and supported by Hakim Ajmal Khan, Maulana Muhammad Ali Jauhar, Zafar Ali Khan, Syed Nabula, a barrister from Lucknow, and Syed Zahor Ahmad, an eminent lawyer, as well as several others. Early years Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan III was appointed the first honorary president of the Muslim League, though he did not attend the Dhaka inaugural session. There were also six vice presidents, a secretary, and two joint secretaries initially appointed for a three-year term, proportionately from different provinces. The League's constitution was framed in 1907, espoused in the Green Book written by Maulana Muhammad Ali. Aga Khan III shared Ahmad Khan's belief that Muslims should first build up their social capital through advanced education before engaging in politics, but would later boldly tell the British Raj that Muslims must be considered a separate nation within India. Even after he resigned as president of the AIML in 1912, he still exerted a major influence on its policies and agendas. In 1913, Muhammad Ali Jinnah joined the Muslim League. 
Intellectual support and a cadre of young activists emerged from Aligarh Muslim University. Historian Mashirul Hassan writes that in the early 20th century, this Muslim institution, designed to prepare students for service to the British Raj, exploded into political activity. Until 1939, the faculty and students supported an all-India nationalist movement. After 1939, however, sentiment shifted dramatically toward a Muslim separatist movement, as students and faculty mobilized behind Jinnah and the Muslim League. Communalism grows Politically, there was a degree of unity between Muslim and Hindu leaders after World War I, as typified by the Khilafat movement. Relationships cooled sharply after that campaign ended in 1922. Communalism grew rapidly, forcing the two groups apart. Major riots broke out in numerous cities, including 91 between 1923 and 1927 in Uttar Pradesh alone. At the leadership level, the proportion of Muslims among delegates to the Congress party fell sharply, from 11% in 1921 to under 4% in 1923. Muhammad Ali Jinnah became disillusioned with politics after the failure of his attempt to form a Hindu Muslim alliance, and he spent most of the 1920s in Britain. The leadership of the League was taken over by Sir Muhammad Iqbal, who in 1930 first put forward the demand for a separate Muslim state in India. The two-nation theory, the belief that Hindus and Muslims were two different nations who could not live in one country, gained popularity among Muslims. The two-state solution was rejected by the Congress leaders, who favoured a united India based on composite national identity. Congress at all times rejected communalism, that is, basing politics on religious identity. Iqbal's policy of uniting the northwest frontier province, Baluchistan, Punjab, and Sindh into a new Muslim majority state became part of the League's political platform. The League rejected the committee report, the Nehru Report, arguing that it gave too little representation only one quarter to Muslims, established Devanagari as the official writing system of the colony, and demanded that India turn into a de facto unitary state, with residuary powers resting at the centre. The League had demanded at least one third representation in the legislature and sizable autonomy for the Muslim provinces. Jinnah reported a parting of the ways after his requests for minor amendments to the proposal were denied outright, and relations between the Congress and the League began to sour. <laughs> Conception of Pakistan On 29 December 1930, Sir Muhammad Iqbal delivered his monumental presidential address to the All India Muslim League annual session. He said, I would like to see Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province now Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Sindh and Baluchistan amalgamated into a single state. Self-government within the British Empire or without the British Empire, the formation of a consolidated Northwest Indian Muslim state appears to me to be the final destiny of the Muslims, at least of Northwest India. Sir Muhammad Iqbal did not use the word Pakistan in his address. According to some scholars, Iqbal had not presented the idea of a separate Muslim state, rather he wanted a large Muslim province by amalgamating Punjab, Sindh, NWFP, and Baluchistan into a big northwestern province within India. They argued that Iqbal never pleaded for any kind of partition of the country. Rather he was an ardent proponent of a true federal setup for India and wanted a consolidated Muslim majority within the Indian Federation." Another Indian historian, Tara Chand, also held that Iqbal was not thinking in terms of partition of India, but in terms of a federation of autonomous states within India. Dr. Safdar Mahmood also asserted in a series of articles that in the Allahabad address, Iqbal proposed a Muslim majority province within an Indian federation and not an independent state outside an Indian federation. On the 28th of January 1933, Chowdhury Ramit Ali, founder of the Pakistan National Movement, voiced his ideas in the pamphlet entitled "Now or Never: Are We to Live or Perish Forever?" In a subsequent book, Remat Ali discussed the etymology in further detail. Pakistan is both a Persian and an Urdu word. It is composed of letters taken from the names of all our South Asia homelands, that is, Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, Sindh and Baluchistan. It means the land of the pure. 
The British and the Indian press vehemently criticized these two different schemes and created confusion about the authorship of the word Pakistan to such an extent that even Jawaharlal Nehru had to write. Iqbal was one of the early advocates of Pakistan and yet he appears to have realized its inherent danger and absurdity. Edward Thompson has written that in the course of a conversation, Iqbal told him that he had advocated Pakistan because of his position as president of Muslim League session, but he felt sure that it would be injurious to India as a whole and to Muslims especially. Campaign for Pakistan Until 1937, the Muslim League had remained an organization of elite Indian Muslims. The Muslim League leadership then began mass mobilization and it then became a popular party with the Muslim masses in the 1940s, especially after the Lahore Resolution. Under Jinnah's leadership, its membership grew to over two million and became more religious and even separatist in its outlook. The Muslim League's earliest base was the United Provinces, where they successfully mobilized the religious community in the late 1930s. Jinnah worked closely with local politicians, however, there was a lack of uniform political voice by the League during the 1938-1939 Mahdi Sahaba riots in Lucknow. From 1937 onwards, the Muslim League and Jinnah attracted large crowds throughout India in its processions and strikes. At a League conference in Lahore in 1940, Jinnah said, Hindus and Muslims belong to two different religious philosophies, social customs, literature. It is quite clear that Hindus and Masamans derive their inspiration from different sources of history. They have different epics, different heroes and different episodes. To yoke together two such nations under a single state, one as a numerical minority and the other as a majority must lead to growing discontent and final destruction of any fabric that may be so built up for the government of such a state. In Lahore, the Muslim League formally recommitted itself to creating an independent Muslim state which would include Sindh, Punjab, Baluchistan, the Northwest Frontier Province, and Bengal, and which would be wholly autonomous and sovereign. The resolution guaranteed protection for non-Muslim religions. The Lahore Resolution, moved by the sitting Chief Minister of Bengal A. K. Fazlul Huq, was adopted on 23 March 1940, and its principles formed the foundation for Pakistan's first constitution. In the Constituent Assembly of India's elections of 1946, the Muslim League won 425 out of 476 seats reserved for Muslims and about 89.2% of Muslim votes on a policy of creating the independent state of Pakistan, and with an implied threat of secession if this was not granted. Congress, led by Gandhi and Nehru, remained adamantly opposed to dividing India, however, 1947 saw violent and bloody battles due to communal clashes between the two communities in India. Millions of people migrated from India to Pakistan and vice versa. The situation continued to be tense even after the governments of the two nations were formed. <laughs> Impact on the future courses of the subcontinent Pakistan After the partition of the British Indian Empire, the Muslim League played a major role in giving birth to modern conservatism in Pakistan and the introduction of the democratic process in the country. The Pakistani incarnation was originally led by the founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and later by Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan, but suffered from ill fate following the military intervention in 1958. One of its factions remained supportive of President Ayub Khan until 1962, when all factions decided to reform into the Pakistan Muslim League led by Nurul Amin, and to support Fatima Jinnah in the presidential elections in 1965. Furthermore, it was the only party to have received votes from both East and West Pakistan during the elections held in 1970. During the successive periods of Pakistan, the Pakistan Muslim League went on to be one of the ruling parties holding alternating power within the nation. <inaudible> India With the partition of the British Indian Empire, the Muslim League lost all influence in the United Provinces and Indian states with a significant Muslim population. In 1948, the Indian Muslim League was formed as a breakaway faction of the Muslim League by those members who did not migrate to Pakistan. 
During its successive periods, the Indian Muslim League remained a part of the Kerala government, nonetheless, the League disintegrated after the general elections of 1980. Many of its leaders later joined Congress and some migrated to Pakistan. The party still has a stronghold in northern Kerala and is the second largest party within the present ruling coalition in the state. <inaudible> Bangladesh The Muslim League formed its government in East Bengal immediately after the partition of Bengal, with Nurul Amin becoming the first chief minister. Problems in East Pakistan for the Muslim League began to rise following the issue of the Constitution of Pakistan. Furthermore, the Bengali language movement proved to be the last event that led the Muslim League to lose its mandate in East Bengal. The Muslim League's national conservatism program also faced several setbacks and resistance from the Communist Party of Pakistan. In an interview given to print media, Nurul Amin stated that the communists had played an integral and major role in staging the massive protests, mass demonstrations, and strikes for the Bengali language movement. All over the country, the political parties had favored the general elections in Pakistan with the exception of the Muslim League. In 1954, legislative elections were to be held for the parliament. Unlike in West Bengal, not all of the Hindu population migrated to India, instead, a large number stayed in the state. The influence of the Communist Party deepened, and its goal of attaining power was finally realized during the elections. The United Front, the Communist Party, and the Awami League returned to power, inflicting a severe defeat to the Muslim League. Out of 309, the Muslim League only won 10 seats, whereas the Communist Party got four seats of the 10 contested. The Communists working with other parties had secured 22 additional seats, totaling 26. The right wing Jamaat e Islami had completely failed in the elections. In 1955, the United Front named Abu Hussein Sarkar as the chief minister of the state and he ruled the state in two non consecutive terms until 1958, when martial law was imposed. The Muslim League remained as a minor party in East Pakistan but participated with full rigor during the Pakistan general elections in 1970. It won 10 seats from East Pakistan and 7 seats from other parts of Pakistan. After the independence of Bangladesh, the Muslim League was revived in 1976 but its size was reduced, rendering it insignificant in the political arena. <laughs> United Kingdom During the 1940s, the Muslim League had a United Kingdom chapter active in the British politics. After the establishment of Pakistan, the Pakistani community's leaders took over the UK branch, choosing Zubeda Habib Rahimtullah as president of the party to continue to serve its purpose in the United Kingdom. At present, the Muslim League's UK branch is led by the PMLN, with Zubair Gul as its president. <laughs> <laughs> Historical versions Historically, Pakistan Muslim League can also refer to any of the following political parties in Pakistan. Muslim League, the original successor of the All India Muslim League, which was disbanded during the first martial law. Convention Muslim League, a political platform created by General Ayub Khan in 1962 when he became the president. Council Muslim League, a party created by political leaders who opposed General Ayub Khan. Muslim League, a party created by Khan Abdul Qayyum Khan when he split with the Council Muslim League to run for the 1970 general elections. See also Indian independence movement Indian Muslim nationalism Indian nationalism